five sensors running, um, some temperature and humidity and some uh, Broen object locators and a radio bridge. And what, what I'm gonna show is, and this is a screenshot. So, so to get up, really better understanding what I can do with these sensors, I'm logging every message they send, okay? And so what I'm showing here is a screenshot for the Bro Broen object locator. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm essentially logging every, uh, in the decoded message, I'm saving everything, like accuracy, battery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> but then I've also added some, as well as the hotspot that it's coming from. But then I've also, uh, I'm using Pipe Dream to send this to Google Sheets. And I've also added logic in Pipe Dream to do some calculations. So I'm calculating the distance to the hotspot uh, on the message use, using the GPS coordinates from the object locator and the GPS that's provided with the hotspot. Uh, and I'm also you doing a reverse geocode lookup to, to kind of find out the address where this really came from. And, and w one reason I did this is I really want to understand how good my coverage is around my house. So like when I drive around, I like I can use this to see about how far I can get from my house. So this past weekend, I was driving back from Mississippi to Atlanta, and I had my locator with me. And this is what, what I observed. So it's kind of interesting. Here's some hot spots that picked me up along the way. And I know this one, it's just south of Birmingham. This hot spot here is 8.6 miles from where I was from, from the interstate. That's pretty amazing. Um, and I, I can, you can see the, the RSSI is negative 123, the signal to noise is negative 14, so it's pretty low, but I was able to pick it up. So anyway, so that's, that's one thing I'm doing with my logging. Uh, and so again, this is the uh, sensors in the console. I wrote a uh, in in uh, HDP integration over to Pipe Dream, and then in Pipe Dream, I wrote a thing to parse data and send it over to a Google Sheet, like what what Joey's done before. Uh, and then another one I did. I, I've got a Browin TBH V110 temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide, and volatile organic measurer. And I, it calculates IOQ, IAQ, indoor air quality. <clears throat> so this also is I'm just dumping the data. I'm doing the same thing. I'm dumping the data. I'm also doing some calculations to get more information out of it. So, so for example, th this is in my house. Ambient temperature, relative humidity, that's coming off the sensor. I'm calculating something called absolute humidity and dew point in my dream. Um, and then, and over here, I'm just running, keeping a running average. And so, so indoor air quality is a function of CO2 and VOC. The, the sensor somehow calculates it using some formula. So last night, I turn my air conditioner on at nine o'clock. And I actually, I also have the sensor running over to Cayenne and I have a trigger on Cayenne to send me an SMS if the VOCs are over 10. That's never happened before. I've never got that trigger. I've, I've got other ones. I've never got that one. I actually got one that night. And it turned out it was about 10 minutes after I turned my air conditioner on to cool my house off. And you can see that's this number right here in the green circle. 12, the VOCs were up to 12 and 11. So then Gary, who's on this call, my father-in-law, HVAC, said, Mike, your filters are probably dirty. So I went up and checked, and that's what they look like. <laughs> so they were very dirty. And that was, I think that was actually what caused the VOC to go up. Uh, when I turned the AC on, it started kicking out the particles. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. 
That has got to be the most convoluted air filter change alert I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but but is it is it the nerdiest you've ever seen? Oh, I love all this data. This is really cool. Um, I don't want to send you off track, but I'd be curious to learn a little bit more about how you did that reverse geo lookup. So that, uh, uh, so for that, I use a service from here.com. They're a location-based service company. And you can, you can get an account. They have a free account and you can use some of their stuff. So in Pipe Dream, <clears throat> in Pipe Dream, I'm pulling out the GPS coordinates and then I have a, a workflow step in Pipe Dream where, I, where I'm calling over to here.com, one of their API functions, to, to, to do the distance calculation. They have one distance calc between two, two sets of coordinates and the reverse geocode lookup. So that, that, that's free from um, here.com. Cool, that's, that's helpful. And do I actually have, I have a little write-up in my GitHub. I'll, I'll, I have a paper. I'll drop that in that link in the um, in the chat. Um, awesome. So. Yeah, check that out. Okay. All oh, right. Very cool. Okay. One. Well, thank you. No, no, that's 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 awesome. Can you, um, if there's any more uh, questions uh, for well, Mike? Well, Mike has that up. If he can go to the uh, uh, with the BOC that chart. Yeah, just to add something to it, I'm the one he called and I told him he had a dirty filter. <laughs> so I, I am in the nerd base also. Um, the um, It just goes to show you how, how you can take and track, uh, look at all of the different variables that are there that are at your fingertips and that you can utilize by laying out a spreadsheet like this. And obviously, um, uh, you can make it far less complicated, but it gives you a variety of different information far greater than you did anticipate if you just look at whatever the sensor is. There's a, there's a lot more to each sensor if you want if you want to put it into a spreadsheet like this. And I I find it intriguing. This is my expertise, uh, and uh, it, it's pretty amazing what you can do, uh, Mike, Joey, or very good at this, but m my point is, uh, you know, there's a lot of information that, that we we obviously take, take for granted that can be displayed and utilized, you know, if we spread it out and take the time to, to uh, uh, you know, work the data into usable uh, uh, format. I would have loved to have seen the power signatures on the local circuits when that compressor was hugged up. Uh, Puffing and puffing with a clogged filter. <laughs> There's a sensor for that, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't, don't have, have one. I have one, but <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not tracking what you're tracking. <laughs> that, that, right. Wouldn't that be that be neat yeah. if there was a column for that, and right if you could see if the current spike cor correlated with the yeah, DLC. Because the is going to pull. It's definitely going to pull load because it's 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 trying to pull, suck that air through that filter, and it ain't going to be doing a good job of it. Yeah. yeah, you know that was one of the things I had once thought about as one of the possible uses would be for a, an HVAC company to put a, a barometric pressure sensor inside the intake, and then you could see whenever the you know if it spikes above a certain drop in barometric pressure when the when the fans turn on, you'd know the filters were bad, or the or the amount of volume going through the return duct back to the actual HVAC unit itself. Which is going to drop dramatically if the if the if the uh, filters clog. Uh, can I have a question quickly? Yes. Uh, what interests me is that uh, apparently at around 12 to 11 of the VOC, uh, the correlation between the CO2 and the air quality index it doesn't seem to increase as much as the VOC, right? Because you have around. Like you, you have six times the volatile organic compounds, but then the CO2 doesn't increase that much and the air quality doesn't also, uh, it's not that much affected. Why might that be when you look at it? 
Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know what the formula is that what, you know, the function that converts mm -hmm. the CO2 to the VOC into this IAQ number. So, uh, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah, we also have to know more about the mechanism for measurement of the volatile organic compounds, because my assumption was that was more like your, uh, your propanes and your like your gases and things like that, or, you know, uh, yeah, well, and things like what that. I was pointing out was that uh, it seems that the air quality still says, stays relatively decent and you have six times the volatile compounds. So, well, yeah. well, well yeah. hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Let, let me show, uh, this, is, this is the real spreadsheet, right? This is the actual spreadsheet right here. If you, if you look kind of over time, like the, the IAQ should be like between 50 and 100. Mm -hmm. So those, um, you can see, um, so uh, being up to 200 is not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you keep in mind too that there's not a direct correlation sometimes between. Yeah, that's my point exactly is. You don't okay. know. You, you can, if you, if you look at it, sometimes you can, uh, you know, th there's not a direct correlation between CO2 and VOCs in some cases. The, the particulates, the size of the particulates yeah. that, 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 it, that it's sensing uh, on the chip, uh, uh, okay, that, 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 that will influence sometimes the, uh, the uh, VOC count. So, but if you go down and you average it, uh, uh, I've had the luxury of being able to look at it every day. You go ahead and look at it. On average, you will see a correlation in 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 many cases between the CO2 uh, and the VOCs. When they're elevated, the VOCs are elevated to some degree, and then add the particulate matter, which it's sensing, the size of the particulate matter that it's sensing, and and you you get an average uh, uh, of CO2 uh, particulates. And Joey's correct. Formaldehyde in the new house. Uh, anything that's outgassing, glue, uh, certain types of glue, especially in new construction, you'll get a, a, a lot of uh, elevated readings. But one quick, uh, one quick observation, and then I'll let it go, is uh, uh, when uh, there was some painting being done in the house, and I could, I could actually tell you when the painting was being done by looking at this chart. So. Uh, and uh, the outgassing of the paint, uh, the, the the changing in the CO2 and the airborne particulate. So it's 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 very interesting. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, it, it seems to me that this is mm, the most interesting when you have a large data set. This would be like a lot more useful for a long term statistic, right? So, yeah. To compare that? those trends. Sorry, where's the actual physical uh, location of the uh, sensor? In my living room. Just sitting out in the open in the living room? Yeah. Not yeah. directly under a vent, not directly under a return? Uh, it's actually probably not that far from a vent because it's on a table near the window. And I think there might be a, a ceiling vent above that window. I really like the work. Cool. No, this is fantastic. Uh, yeah, it is. I have just add on here. I've noticed that uh, uh, a buddy of mine was doing a project like this uh, on these lines, and he got new furniture, and those numbers just skyrocketed. Oh yeah. Um, with with the album. yeah. So. yeah. So, I, so I was actually thinking like this is probably information that in some ways you don't really want to know because. You, you can't stop living your life in your house. You, know, you <laughs> want to know your IAQ has gone really bad. It's just it's some, something else to worry about. Yeah, I'm, I'm real terrified for the day I turn my particulate sensors on. <laughs> <laughs> I live near a okay. freeway. It's, it's all bad. Uh, yeah, Mike, we got to pair up and get some charts going. I think that's where you start to see these lines, um, you know, converge and things like that. I think it could be um, yes. really cool. Yeah. Yes, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with you on the side, Joey. See if we can get something interesting, useful out of this. Yeah, it's fun. You know, throw okay. data at all time. 
Okay, he's, okay. This, is a, this is a very valuable presentation for, I mean, I, I'm right now working with um, layer zero on kind of a citywide helium implementation here in Long Beach, California. But th this is the type of data, though you might be scared probably having this in your own home, potentially, it is an example of how it might be valuable data uh, from a citywide implementation, from an inspection standpoint, from an alert mechanism for um, elderly patients that are more susceptible to these types mm -hmm. of influences. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of value here. It, it's that kind of presentation. This this kind of work being done um, is is exceedingly valuable, and I and I thank you for that. Okay, thank you, thank you.